The following session was recorded live in St. Louis, Missouri for the 2001 Annual International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is tape number 17, Multi-Cycle Teaching. This is the Multi-Cycle Teaching session. All right. If you don't, if you don't already have a handout, you might pick up a handout at the back door back in here. This is the Caller Lab handout that has been available for some time. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? All right? How many of you had breakfast this morning or made it in time for breakfast? Anybody didn't make breakfast? All right. Good idea. Uh, this is the multi cycle teaching session. We've been excited about multi cycle programs for a long, long time. They are by no means new. As many of you know, I think the first time that I ever heard of this program was back in the 80s. Uh, Daryl McMillan who was a former chairman of Caller Lab, used to use this program. And every 10 weeks, he started something different in a, a, a new group of dancers. And it just seemed to work for him. And this has been going on in, in some form or another for a number of years. There's those of us that have been only using it for maybe a, the last five or six years. But, but I, I think this is, this is the key to the future of square dancing. We need to stop thinking about starting classes once a year and, and, uh, and, and, and start thinking about other ways to bring dancing or to make it more available to our prospective uh, new dancers. One of the things about multi-cycle teaching, and by the way, in case anybody doesn't know me, my name is Mike Seastrom. My wife, Gail, is in the back, back there. It's uh, nice to have you here. I'll introduce my panelists in just a second. But one of the things about the multi-cycle method of teaching new dancers is that you're starting classes more than once a year. All right? You're making dancing more available at more times than just once a year. And that's been the box that we've been into for a long, long time. If somebody missed the window of opportunity to join dancing once a year, they missed it for, until the next year. And that's the neat thing about this program is that it, we start more than one time a year. That in, in itself is a huge, huge benefit. The other thing is that instead of having one class a night, you have multiple classes on the same night. So your income increases for your existing hall to, to pay the rent and, and so many of us doing these programs are now the classes make money for the club it's not a drain on the club so it's an excellent way to economically make the new dancer program work for your club or for your group the other thing that I love about this is that it makes your new dancers the brand new people that are in your class your primary recruiters I mean, you're still getting your club people involved, you're still publicizing your class, but the key is that your brand new people who are at the peak of their enthusiasm, about halfway or the third of the way or a quarter of the way through the class, these people are excited about dancing. And they're the people that go out as your disciples and they bring their friends in. So it's a whole way of new way of recruiting person to person, which has always been our most effective way of recruiting. It brings those people into the picture and your club people are just encouraging them, just encouraging them. So I love the fact that, that it, it makes economic sense. We can make the product more available to people more times a year, and it gets new dancers as your primary recruiters. The other thing about my personal, the way that, that we run it anyway, is it's a shorter class time. We do an hour and a half for each phase. I do two phases on the same night, and it's just an hour and a half each time we do it. The thing I like about it is that an hour and a half doesn't wear people out. When people first start dancing, a lot of our dancers, new dancers, are not physically active. And because they're not physically active, they tire very easy. So we not only talk to them about posture and breathing and stuff, because we know that they're, enter they're entering into an exercise program, basically. But after an hour and a half, these people are not dead on their feet. They're not dragging themselves out the back door. They're kind of walking out the back door, and they're looking over their shoulder, and they're thinking, God, I'm, I'm not ready to leave yet. And so a lot of times they'll stick around and watch the next phase or, or we do an angel tip between our first or second phase and we just hoop it up and have a great time at it. And the, the bottom line is they're really not ready to leave. You leave them wanting more. And I think that's one of the real keys about this program. The other thing is there is a ton of ways to make this program work for you. 
every one of us up here, and I know many of you out there are using this program, and I'm going to ask for those of you that are using this program this morning to, to talk more about the way you're making it work in your area. It is so adaptable. You can change it to fit the time schedule, your haul schedule. If you have a harvest time or you have a hot time in your in your particular area and you, and you, you can't dance during that period of time, it, it can work for you. The key is is again starting more than one time of year, having more than group on one more than one group on each night, and using your new dancers as your primary recruiters. That's the real key to this whole program. Any questions so far? I want to just explain a little bit about this document. This document's been available for a long time for Caller Lab. The back of the document contains a list of names of callers that we update every year. And these are contacts of callers that are presently using the program or have used the program and, and can be reachable by either email or telephone or address. We like for people to be able to contact callers, whether it's in their area or someone they may know or whatever. And if you would like to be a contact or you would like to help us, we would sure like to have your name on this. The more callers that we can have as contacts, the more people that can serve as, I don't know, I guess disciples would be the way to, to, uh, to say it. But the more people that can, can share this information, share how they were able to adapt this program, the better off we're going to be. Uh, I think we need to start thinking out this little outside the little box of, of, of how we run our new dancer programs because unless you have an active new dancer program with your club in your area, square dancing is on the way down. There's a natural attrition of, of people getting involved with other things, people that come in and out of the activity for health reasons or for uh, we have a highly mobile society, people move around a lot. There's a natural attrition that takes place. And unless we're able to share this program, uh, with uh, with other new people, uh, dancing is going to have a tendency to tail off or, or to decrease in the numbers in your area. So I strongly encourage you to get people involved in this. The other thing that I'd like to say that, that I really believe strongly is that this is not a program you try for one year. This is a program that takes a while to build momentum. It took us two years of doing this program and I and the and the club I was working with really was working hard to make this thing work. We had angels out there. We we were including the people in our club uh, and I we can talk more about that in a little bit. But the key is that that you need to get the cycles going to build momentum so that your new dancers are bringing in enough people every time so you can keep the momentum going because once you get momentum going, this thing's going to work for you. Okay, it's just a matter of making it go. So if you've tried it maybe once or you tried it for maybe uh, one year and, and, and stopped doing it, you didn't stay with it long enough. The, the advantages of this program are still better than any of the advantages we have to the traditional way of using, uh, of teaching our dancers. It, it's a little bit of, it, it's work. There's no doubt about it. It's work because you're, but the rewards and the enthusiasm you can bring into your new dancer program will amaze you. Uh, is it a little bit more work? I think so. Those of us that do it, uh, it's it's definitely more work. You've got two different groups going, uh, and and yet the excitement of being in a in a setting like this to have those new people bringing in their friends. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have that comment from your your dancers that have brought their friends to the phase. They come back and they say, "God, it's so nice to be the smart ones." They come back and they angel. They're angeling their friends. They're dancing with their friends that they brought into the class immediately. And they're the smart ones. They're not even done with class yet, but they're so proud to be the, the ones actually angeling and helping their friends through the class experience. And at the same time, they're getting the review on the material that you've just gone through. Whatever your destination program is, that's not important. You can make this thing work for your area. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce a gentleman who's from up in the Minneapolis area. Uh, he's been involved in this program for about four years. He has a book on the program. I think it's available through American Square Dance Society. Uh, sets in order, not sets in order, but American Square Dance Magazine. I'm dating myself, uh, but I think I think you'll find I think you'll find his approach to the his approach to the the multi cycle uh, method of teaching uh, unique, and I think uh, you'll enjoy his presentation. So let's give a nice hand to Milt Floyd. By the way, I have a portable microphone here. We're going to use this. If you have questions, make sure they get on the microphone. Okay, Chris, if you wouldn't mind running the mic, that'd be great. Thank you, Mike. In Minneapolis, uh, starting in September, I'll be starting the fifth year of the program that I currently use. Um, we've had a lot of success. The first two years, we were going at about an 88% retention rate, which was phenomenal. 
Uh, the second or the third year, it dropped back to about 70 percent. Last year, we were trying some different things and found that they really didn't work. We went back to basics. Our retention rate dropped a lot. So starting in January with the group that started then, we went back to the original plan, and now we're back up to 10 squares every Monday. So if you never taught for 10 squares, it's a lot of fun. It's like doing a regular dance, and that's the way my approach looks at it is we are there as an entertainer and what we're going to do is a dance now we're doing it at two levels simultaneously when I work the multi-cycle my destination program is mainstream I developed a way to effectively teach mainstream in 20 weeks from standard position only and when you first start this tell the people that this is where you're going that there's more out there more available, but what you're going to learn is standard position. Once they understand that, they're okay. Then when they go to a dance and they do something left-handed, then they know that there was more there, just they didn't get a chance to learn it. My program is, is relatively simple. I teach for 10 weeks, we do a dance at the level they're at. The following week, we start a new group. The group that just finished their first 10 weeks are angels. And like Mike says, they get puffed up chest because now we're the ones that get to be the angels. And I require that group to angel the new group coming in for their full 20 weeks, which means that that first group has 30 weeks of floor time on the mainstream program. They get a reteach on every single move. They get it taught twice. The challenges as a caller are, first of all, you have to come up with new jokes all the time. <laughs> because, yeah. We all use jokes, you know, to break the ice and things like that. Well, these dancers that are there week after week, year round, you got to have new material. So thank goodness for the internet. You know, people always send me stuff, so I always have new material coming in. So, and use that to your advantage. You know, um, the other advantage is you always get new people year round. September, I started nine. I started eleven. We graduated nine. In November, we started. 17, I graduated 14. We just started 11 new ones in March. June is our summer start, and that's our biggest group. Our biggest group comes through the summer because you have all these other clubs graduating these new dancers in April and May that have all these friends that don't want to wait until September. It says, hey, let's got a group starting in June. So they bring them. And last summer... There were weeks, we dance on Monday nights, there were Monday nights when I had 18 squares. That's phenomenal. It, it just is, and the federation up there is finally paying attention. And there are other clubs now considering maybe this is something we ought to look at. Not only dancing year round, but starting new dancers more than once a year. Uh, Mike said it, and I'll, I'll repeat it, you know, the save your four square dance, part of it is going to be multi-cycle. We have to offer this opportunity more than once a year. It's just like anything else. If you only offer it in September, these people will go bowling. If they're interested in January, they're not going to wait nine months. They want it now. That's the nature of our society, the way it's become. It's fast-paced. They want what they want when they want it. And multi-cycle is a way to give it to them. My program... As Mike said, I, I do have a book. Unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong copy. This is not the updated one, so I'm not going to make this available here. <laughs> uh, there, there have been some revisions made to this one. I run two sessions simultaneously. The first tip, and for lack of better colors, since I only have red and black, <laughs> on, the, on the chart over here, you'll see that I've marked out a, line, a red line that goes 1 to 10 and then a space. That space is the dance. Don't forget to let them dance. They've gone through 10 weeks of learning. Now give them a chance just to relax, kick back, and dance. You don't teach anything. You don't go beyond where they are. You call strictly at what you've taught those 10 weeks and let them dance. Also, this is the week that these new dancers that have just completed 10 weeks can bring their friends. This is where you introduce them. You do a couple tips just for them to give them a taste. When you start the 11th week for the red, you start the first week for the black. Now, the red are now angels for this black group. 
and you go through the first 10 weeks teaching the blacks, same thing you taught the reds, their first 10, you proceed through the mainstream program with the reds. The reds will now continue another 10 weeks as angels while the blacks finish their mainstream program, and in the middle there, you'll start another group. So it's just, they're overlapping. Each night you're going to be working with two different levels, basic and mainstream. I know basic's no longer a move, but, I mean, no longer a level, but through, ba through mainstream 53. <laughs> okay. The way I do it now, the first tip is my, is my brand new people. The second tip is the second group, the mainstream 53 and up. Third group, back to basics. Fourth tip. Mainstream. The fifth tip is my angel tip. That's my thank you to the angels for showing up week after week. And I cater to them. I have a younger group now with angels. Uh, the last four sessions I have started, I would say the average age is 35. So I have a very young crowd now, and they love hot hash. So this is their time to just kick back and let it all hang out, and I give them what they want. They want hot hash, they get hot hash. They want a couple singing calls. We have nights when everybody just wants to relax and do nothing. It's their tip, their call. But the fifth tip is theirs. And then f four through nine, I do nine tips a night, three hours. Four through nine, again, is alternating between basic and mainstream. At the end of the night, be sure you tell everybody thank you. <laughs> and... Uh, Invite them. After the fifth week, beginning the sixth week, I start talking about the next session. It's going to start on this date, you know, June 4th. It'll be my next start. On June 4th, don't forget to bring your friends. Start talking to them now. And each week, you start reminding them. And June 4th, the friends start showing up. But you just need those little <laughs> gentle reminders. I keep my, my group open for the dance night and the first week. <coughs> After that, it's closed because to do it in 20 weeks, you can't prolong past that second week and keep having to go back and repeat and repeat. Ten weeks is not that long to wait. They will wait ten weeks. Any questions? Gene Baker from North Carolina. Um, Mike, what what is the pay people that come in on the first group and take ten, and then they come to the second group? Do you charge the same thing for the first group as you do the second group when they're being angels? Yes. We treat it just as a dance. Everyone that comes in the door pays. And that fee would be what? We charge five dollars a person per night. Was I that thorough? <laughs> uh, J.D. Strasser from Indianapolis. Uh, do you find that the... Uh, how do you prepare for this? Uh, I, I, I understand that, you know, I mean, it's, you've been doing it for a while and so forth and so on, but uh, there's a couple times that I've been teaching lessons, I start to do something, and I say, whoop, back up. <laughs> I haven't thought that yet. So, yes. So. <laughs> Flexibility is a, is a, a very important key. Uh, you're going to have those nights when nothing works. You, you just, you will have them. I, and I don't know whether it's the full moon or what. You're going to have those nights when absolutely nothing works. The flip side of that is you're going to have those nights when everything works and you go well beyond where you thought you would. I have a, a curriculum broken down what I plan to teach each night. And most of the time I'm able to stay with it. And then sometimes you just throw the lesson plan out and, and go with the floor and the following week hopefully pick it up. But things do balance out. I'm uh, Dick Gaskell, San Jose. As I understand, you do alternating tips kind of like red light, green light when you're doing your teaching. Do you ever have any complaints from the beginners that they're there for three hours and that they're only on the floor half the time? No. The 
One of the experiments we tried this past year was to have these new dancers off in their own little group doing their thing. We found this was not really conducive to learning. What it did is created clicks. And so we leave them on the floor. Not everybody, not all the angels dance during the, those tips. We have more angels now than we do others. So the angels talk with these new dancers. They integrate them into the club, you know, and, and get them involved in club activities. We have refreshments every night. And it's, your name goes on, a, it's by alphabet, you know, A through D, we'll bring them and, and et cetera. So these new dancers are put into that program as soon as they sign up. So they they become a part of the activity immediately. They don't have to reach this level to be a club member. Another thing we do is if they want a club badge, we give them a club badge. It, it, second week, if they want a club badge, they can have a club badge. If they're asking for a club badge, they're telling you, I'm making a commitment to your club. I want to be a part of this. And so we encourage that. The sooner we get them involved, the more involved they become, and the more consistent your program runs. I noticed one of the uh, – J.D. Strauss in Indianapolis here. One of the, uh, the biggest fears that a lot of clubs have is telling people how long they're going to be involved. And you didn't seem to have any reservation about telling them that, okay, this is going to take this particular period of time. That goes fine? Yes. We, we tell them that there are two 10-week programs. The first 10 weeks will take you through basics. The second 10 weeks will take you through mainstream. We just tell them that up front. We also charge them up front. They don't pay a week at a time. They pay $50 per person per session. Uh, I have a question here. It says, how many hours per group? We dance three hours, and each group dances four tips, 20-minute tips. That would be a... Approximately five minutes, and and again it'll depend on on the night. But I try to limit it to five minutes, no more than five minutes. You don't want them sitting around too long. So. All right, John Stilson from Appleton, Wisconsin. You had mentioned there were a number of things that did not work for you, and you ended up re-revising this program. Can you give us some insights that way? Yeah, one of the, one of the, I just touched on it a minute ago was where we tried separating the groups and working with just that group to reinforce things that they were having problems with. And by isolating them away from the floor, it created these clicks, which caused us a lot of problems. Then they didn't want to dance with the other dancers. They just wanted to dance with their little group. So that worked against us. Um, <laughs> another thing was we tried doing two tips for each group at a time, uh, back to back and found that then we got the problem of I'm sitting out too long, not dancing. And so we went back to the alternating tips. The other thing we looked at was doing the angel tip at the very end, and uh, that wasn't didn't work as well for us as putting it in the middle. I still don't have a problem with angels leaving early, even though that angel tip is in the middle. They still stick around. Gene Baker again. Does this do away with the graduation uh, at the end of the, the sessions? Or, you know, I've, I've heard this thing about graduation, that this is the worst thing in the world we can do for classes is to graduate them. Because when you graduate them, that gives them options to leave. So I don't know. I want your opinion on that. Good question. Um, we don't do a graduation at the end of each session. We... we recognize them as having completed the program. There, there are, my philosophy is, I don't call them students. I don't call them classes. I, I refer to them as new dancers because they are. From the, from the first 15 minutes they walk in the door, they're new dancers. And because we treat it like a dance, program it like a dance, we call it a dance rather than a lesson. It's just we use a progressive dance and so they're learning as they go. Between May and June, that session, we do one huge graduation and recognize everyone that has completed the program, give them their certificates, and we have a big party at that time to recognize everyone that's completed the program through that year. 
uh, have, haven't had a problem with them with them leaving. Um, sometimes I have more angels than I know what to do with, but I'm not complaining. Chris, Chris, you want to speak on graduations? Just okay. Paul Walker, uh, North Carolina. I want to talk about the time that you're talking about. In your phase one, the first red line, you say you go an hour and a half, but on the first night that you start that first group, you've got a three-hour dance. Do you go the full three hours? Correct. Lynn Nelson, Kansas City. I guess I'm not understanding if you've got two different levels going. Your, your first session, you're going through basics, second session through mainstream. But you're dancing both levels in the first session? At, at first I thought you were talking to me every other tip was on your, your fifth, six week dance, your, your middle break dance. Now you're telling me that during the first session you're still going every other tip at the level? I, clarify that for me, okay. I guess I'm a little dense this morning, I'm sorry. No problem. When you first start multi-cycle, your first 10 weeks, you're only going to have one level. When you begin your second 10 weeks and you add that second group, you will add both levels. So your first 10 weeks, if you're just starting, you only have one level, just like you would starting a group in September. You would go exactly the same way. But at the end of 10 weeks, when you add the second group, then you go to alternating tips and expand your time. Now, as I say, this is the fifth year that I'm, I've been doing it. So it, it, when we started in 97, only had one group to start in September, and that was an hour and a half. Then when we added the second group, we expanded the time to three hours. Uh, Milk, I'm not really, I think uh, I'm having the same problem she's having with that. I know we do multi-cycle. We do what we call phase one and phase two. Phase one takes you from basic zero up to about um, maybe 40, whatever it is. I don't really have a list in front of me. Then we have the phase two, which goes from 40 on up to 70. Do you do the same thing? Do you alternate tips on uh, for the entire evening? Yes. So the people, the brand new people, stay for the entire three hours. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, let's do one more one more question, then we're going to go on because we, we're each each one of us do this in a little bit different way, and we'll talk to some of you too. Thank you, Jim Jeffries, Kansas. Uh, my question is, uh, you, you go for a total of thirty weeks with each session, and and how many of those thirty week sessions do you have a year? Currently, I have one group that I'm working with. Uh, May 29th, I'm starting a second group. So, so you'd say what two sessions a year? Is that, is that correct? No, I run year round. I start four groups. Oh, I see. Four times a year. Four, time, four times a year. I'm starting a second group now that will go through the same process. That, that's quite a commitment for a caller. Do, do you do you have um, any other callers that, that do you switch off callers or do you handle it all yourself? No, there's no other callers up there that will do that. <laughs> they just uh, they would love to do what I do, but some of them don't have the skills to do it and some of them don't have the desire. Thank you. We got one more, one more question up here in the front. It's it's interesting because Milt runs like you said every other tip, and when he he was addressing that first issue about when you first start this, the first time you start a multi-cycle program, you're running one group. Some of us, when we started out, ran one group of new dancers and did a workshop for our club, particularly those people that, that uh, were trying to re-recruit back in the activity. They've just recently kind of left the club or they're just not active or they, they, they don't want to start over in class. Round up those people. One of the neat things about this program is it's a great way for dancers that have been out of the activity for a short period of time to come back in and not go through the whole program. I would say we have got gotten over the last five years that we've been running the program, probably over 100 dancers from all the other clubs in the area that dropped out for one reason or another, came back through our program, and then went back to their clubs. Because they, they could, instead of starting over one time a year, they could join our group and come go through the class and then go back to their original club. So it's a great way to re-enter the activity, too. Terry, Terry Lewis, Minnesota, Canada. Uh, like, 
That's a good question. I, I have three dancers that will never, ever, ever be mainstream dancers. Ever. But they are so happy to have a place to go every week and meet their friends, dance with their friends. They don't care. They just, each new group starts, they change colors. And they just, they will always be basic dancers, but they know they have a place to go. And that's the beauty of multi-cycle, is you can cater to them also. That's the importance of doing this dance, because every 10 weeks they have a dance at their level. And if they choose, they can try the mainstream program, but they've found, and these, these three ladies in particular are older ladies, and it's the three-quarter turns and stuff that get them disoriented, so they just choose not to. Just, we're fine right here. And they're happy with it, and that's the beauty of multi-cycle. You can, you can capture all those people. Uh, Mike, Mike said it, but I wanted to add to it. You have to take the blinders off if you're going to use this program, and you've got to look at the whole picture rather than your little club. I have dancers come through this program from all the clubs in the metro area, and I don't care what club they belong to. I care that they're dancing. And that's the attitude you have to have to make it work. Not all the clubs in your area are going to use multi-cycle. And if you're the only show in town, be prepared to have new dancers from those other clubs. But let them go back to the, and support those other clubs because that's what's going to support the activity. Uh, Will Hibbs from California. I have one more question for you, Milt. Do the angels come to your dance? Do they pay? pay the, do they pay the same as students? And uh, at what point do you say, now you are an angel, you're no longer a student? Everyone that comes in the door pays. Same price. Same price. It's $5 per person. The difference is the new dancers coming in pay 10 weeks in advance through 30 weeks. After 30 weeks, they can pay each week as they come in. But we ask that the first 30 weeks, they pay in advance and haven't had a problem with it. It's a lot less book work for the clubs, a lot less hassle for you. So. All right. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. Listen, nice effort. This uh, next caller has been using this program off and on over the years, and, and uh, he and his wife, Donna, are in a whole different area. They, they treat this program a little bit differently, but uh, let's uh, have a nice round of applause for Dana Shermer and his wife, Donna. Over here. Good morning. As Mike said, we, we treat a little bit different. We're not quite as structured as what Mike and, and Melk is, too. We uh, started the program many years ago through necessity. I was calling for three clubs, a mainstream level, a plus club, uh, doing a lot of traveling, working a job, expecting to work 10, 12-hour days. Um, so we, we came to a decision long ago that said, well, each club wants their own lessons. How do I do three sets of lessons and call their club dances, do my traveling, do my work, and make this work? So we came up with a, the intent that we just... We start one in September, another one in January, and one somewhere else during the, the summer months. And it was just kind of a fluke that worked. All of a sudden, we saw, the, saw exactly what these two guys have been saying. We had bigger attendance in the January classes, the summer classes. The September class wasn't too bad. But as we started one class, all of a sudden you'd have somebody say, hey, when are you going to start the next class? I have somebody who wants to come through. Or... When you get halfway through, we have somebody who's been dancing a long time and quit and want to get back in. They don't want to start with a circle left. They want to start with the mainstream program. Well, here's a good point from the jump in. So it was kind of a, a, like I said, we stumbled into it, and we saw the success of it, and we started using it on a regular basis. And the flexibility is what we use, I guess, 
a little more because we don't start every 12 weeks or 10 weeks. We start 14, 15, 16 weeks, somewhere in there. Whatever works best in the calendar with vacations, holidays, and so forth. That's kind of the way we settle it up. So we have three sets of lessons every year. And I do them on separate nights. Rather than having them on the same night, I may have one class starting on Tuesday, 15 weeks later say, we're going to start another set on Sunday or on Thursday. So that we're having two hours dedicated to the class. And we encourage them then also to bring their people to the next set of lessons as they come up and use them as angels. It's not, we do not mandate it. We ask them to. And we get get pretty res- good response from that. But as we all know, one of the big keys at any lessons is these are the same people that can sell square dancing. If you have to wait one year, they're not going to be selling square dancing as hard as they are right now in lessons. So if you if you stay, tell them, hey, there's going to be another set of lessons starting in seven or eight weeks, they're out selling already, and they will bring these new people to this next set of lessons. If they get out of lessons once, it's going to be a while, a break, and then they're going to say, wait a minute, we were going to ask such and such to come join our classes, but that was eight, eight nine weeks ago, and now we're not that enthused about it, and we're not going to ask them. If they're still in the midst of learning, they're going to want to bring people out. They want to get people involved. So that's kind of the, the theory we got into. Um, one thing I think you've seen from both Mike and Milt so far is their, their enthusiasm for it, their dedication to it. And that's the nice thing about the program. It works. It really does work. Um, I recently saw, I'm kind of jumping off the subject, but I recently saw a club in our area, a small town, about 10,000 people, celebrate the 50th anniversary. Uh, it's in January. Had the newspaper come out, take big photographs in a small town. It was one full page, front page article on the, the club's anniversary. And nice pictures of not only older square dancers, younger square dancers, kids, and they were all in this picture dancing. And a very nice article all the way through except for the very last line. Lessons start in September. By September, they've lost all the enthusiasm. They've lost all that publicity because nobody's going to remember what was said back in January. If they would have said, lessons start next week, they could have probably gotten quite a bit of PR from that, that newspaper. So it's a flexibility. If you're going to move that way, think about what you can do with the programs, but also think about um, how it can work, and then if it doesn't work the first time, stir a step to where it does work. Learn from your failures, learn from your success, and make it work. That's the best way I can say. We um, we had this last year had to take a little break from the, the program ourselves, as uh, Mike said. It's one of those things we we worked pretty pretty close to the whole program all the way through. But last year we had a little bit of work involvement that I had to break away from the the three schedules. We did try to do two lessons this year. But uh, we, we'll, we're going to try another set here sort of shortly and get started again on the rotation. The, uh, the success is good. The, the other clubs involved in the area uh, do that just like Mike said. They will come. They will send their people to you because they know they don't have lessons going until September, knowing that they, they may come and help as angels. They may bring some of the people that have been out for a while. And they always know we have a set of lessons going. We get a lot of phone calls saying, when's your next set of lessons? from other club members, from other clubs. And uh, so it's very beneficial to, to our, our program. It helps us out there, but at the same point in time, it helps the other clubs because they have their people coming back into the clubs. Um, I think that's pretty much what I'm going to say. I don't get too carried away because there's a lot of programs out there, and I think the big thing is the flexibility, as I said, make it work for your particular area and your particular clubs. Uh, Dana, two parts, if I may. One, one's going to go to Milt. I'm sorry. Uh, is there some club uh, competition uh, that you see, or is it, uh, you know, in, in, is there any antagonist, antagonism between the clubs? And also, uh, the last part for you, uh, is this call a run, Milt, the, the organization that you use, or is it actually club run? Oh, when you're talking about the clubs, you're talking about my own particular clubs? No, um, because three clubs I call for are different, different stages of clubs. 
I have a singles club, a club that dances during the week, and a weekend club. Well, there are people that are going to dance on weekends. There are other people who can't dance on weekends or dance on weeks. And then, of course, singles will want to be with singles. So now there's very little competition among the clubs. My three particular club. And this is, again, one of those things that for my, my program, it works great. Maybe for someone else, if you had three weekend clubs, you may have a little bit of problem with it doing that particular way, but adapt it to what can work. We, um, we get a lot of participation from all the clubs, even though there may be someone saying, well, they never join our clubs. They know very good and well they will visit their club. And the visitor's just as good as the member. Answer to your question, the program I'm using right now is Club Run. The one I'm starting in May will be Color Run. So I will have one of each, and next year I'll have more information for you. Uh, Dick Duckham from Michigan. And uh, with a 14-week program, uh, is your uh, entry window still two weeks? Two weeks. You mean two hours? How many open nights do you have before you close the climb? Oh, I, I go three nights. Now, I open the doors three nights. I let people in. And... Uh, we figured 14 is kind of a, like I said, it's flexible. Because we all know people learn at different stages. And if it takes me 15 or 16 weeks to start next, next group, I will. Or if it just doesn't fall right in the calendar, I will wait. Or it may start a little earlier. Uh, it's 14 and 15 is my standard normal. But it will not be set in stone. Mel Estes from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, apparently you have, and your friend too, has... Uh, access to a lot more halls than we have in our place. Uh, how do you go about the, the cost benefit uh, as, as, as opposed to paying for the rental of the hall and that sort of thing? We, uh, we fight the, the same problems. We, say, we fight the problem with the hall. Um, we have one square dance hall that I can rent on Sunday evenings. Uh, there's also a recreation group, a recreation center that um, has helped us in quite a bit. We went to them, and one time they were wanting me to pay $45 a night or $45 an hour for rent, which is unacceptable. I couldn't do that. But we approached them about being an education group, and they decided we were right. They wanted something to fill in their program, so they gave us a, kind of a small haul, but it works pretty good. And all we have to do is simply, I provide my calling free, and they, they advertise it as a square dance license in their brochure, and they give me the hall free. So I'm giving my time free, but at the same point in time, I get the hall free. So I don't think it's, it's kind of a balanced out effect. Dick Gaskill, San Jose. <clears throat> I'd like to ask Mike this question, I think, um, because, Milt, you're a mainstream area, and you're a mainstream area. And Mike, you're a plus area, right? How do you integrate these dancers into the plus dancing community if the multi-cycle only goes through mainstream? My multi-cycle goes through plus. Okay? How, do you, how do you do it then? I, we, our program actually starts every 17 weeks, three times a year, September, January, and May. And I have two groups that go on the same night. I teach my phase one from 7 to 8.30, and I teach just the basic program in that phase one. If I get a little bit into the mainstream program, terrific. But if I'm just up to Ferris wheel or the basic, you know, I'm going to say basic for a long time, I guess, Main, mainstream 53, um, I, I, I find it works well. And, and, and I, from 7 to 8.30, that's what I teach. Okay, that's my new dancers. We don't alternate tips. Um, right around 7.30, we have announcements. I do a, a patter call for the angels. And then from 8.30 to 10, I teach Phase 2. And in Phase 2, I'm teaching the Mainstream and the PLUS program. Uh, we have gotten to the point in our area where we have a once-a-month dance, Mainstream dance, that's catered to all the classes in the area. We invite everybody to come to that dance. We've provided this dance for them. And sometimes that's just a, a basic dance or, or up to 53. Well, whoever, we just try to put the wind in their face, dance with them, and have a great time. And we have anywhere from 50 to tw or 15 to 20 squares at that dance so once a month. And, and that helps an awful lot. Give them another place to dance. The dancers, the new dancers that get out and dance at every opportunity they can, usually will go all the way to through the PLUS program in two sessions. They'll go through phase one, they'll go through phase two, and then we graduate them. We graduate them. And 
good or bad, I, I have feelings both ways, and Chris is going to address this in just a little bit uh, the, about the concept of graduation. But the bottom line is some people go right through it in two phases. A good number of those dancers take either repeat phase one, back through the basic program again, or they'll, they'll uh, repeat phase two, or they'll repeat both of them. And like Milt, I have dancers that have been in the basic program for two years now, and they just don't, they're not going to probably make it through mainstream and, and plus, but they can dance usually at that once a month dance, and they're there every Tuesday night, and they're helping out, and, uh, and it, it works for them. So I, I like doing phase one and phase two and not alternating tips. I have some of the, the, the dancers that have been through phase one. They come at about 8.15, 8.30, and they dance till 10. And I have some of them that, that come there at 7, and they're, they're out of the, the hall by 8.30. Okay? This ends the front side of your cassette. Running our programs individually. There's, our, there's areas I know where callers are working together on their programs, and this would fit real well into the, what they're doing. If you have two or three callers that can work together and get their schedule set up right, this could work very well for them. We uh, had a gentleman from Washington, D.C., wasn't it? Yeah, Bill Mitchell. Bill uh, Mitchell, who explained uh, a program they had there. At one hall, they could divide into three parts. They had three callers working in each hall, and they took 30 weeks to go from, from the very ground floor to mainstream. They ran 10 weeks in each hall. One caller teach the first 10 weeks, then they move to another hall, and the next caller teaches the second step in 10 weeks, and they go to the third hall, and they teach 10 weeks in the next hall with another call. And they always had another one, a group starting in the very first, every 10 weeks. And they just rotate these dancers around through. And once in a while, they throw in a party night. And rather than graduation, as you said, they just open up the doors, and everybody dance together from all the levels. And uh, very successful, from what I understand. They had the hall to do it. They had the callers to commit to it. And uh, another example of how flexible this program can be. Virgil Forbes from Maryland. Uh, Actually, his name is Bruce Mitchell. Mitchell. That's the other multi-cycle program in Washington, D.C. There are two, one on the north side, one on the south side. Uh, I work on the north side. Three callers, three floors, no waiting. Uh, the other callers involved are Jim Wass from the Accreditation Committee and Kenny Ferris. That's the name on the back of the flyer. We have a radically different setup that seems to work. It, the numbers aren't as big as you're indicating, but we like it. Uh, we have a three-floor building, three callers. We start in September and end in July. We have three starts for beginners at eight-week intervals. We start in September, November, and January, the January group graduating in July. To fill the other floors in September, we start an eight-week mainstream refresher course for returning dancers. And the third floor is our plus class each fall. So that the people who've taken up to mainstream the year before can dance the summer, the spring summer at mainstream, and then take plus the following fall. Then in November, when the mainstream refresher is over, we start the second phase of beginner. And in January, when the plus class is over, we can start the third phase of beginners on the third floor that was the plus floor. And then sometimes we will get in a plus workshop April, May on the third floor. But with three floors, three starts, it's a pure caller-run club using angels from our own clubs, but the clubs do not in any way control the program. Uh, it has worked well for us, not the big numbers, but we're a predominantly plus area, uh, and we're averaging a little over a square per start, which added with the just over a square per start at Boomerangs, the group on the south side, is roughly 80% of the new dancers in the Washington, D.C. area every year. Good show. Do you provide dancing opportunities for your new dancers in the summertime? Are qualified, yes. Uh, As long as we can keep them dancing up through July, past July 4th, we will dance mainstream at the mill on Monday. Uh, The Baltimore area has a big festival the end of July. That tends to be the end of the session. People go to the festival and they say, we had a great time, let's see what September brings. Um, But each of us, each of the three callers involved, also has another summer program 
separate from the Monday night. So we do not just leave them hanging. I will also comment, in the last three years, our graduates have joined seven different clubs. So we're happy we're providing dancers for the whole area. Do your dancers pay for an entire session? or Eight just weeks at a time. Eight weeks at a time? Eight weeks at a time. Uh, we're uh, <clears throat> co-sponsored by the local park and recreation association and by the way our rent is 30 percent of the gross and the callers get 70 percent which any more is about as fair as you can get how, how much do your dancers pay per night five bucks a night okay in in uh, with our group we our dancers pay four dollars per night and that's per night and they pay each night they come in for phase one, phase two. After they finish phase two, we encourage them to come back as workshop dancers. They have a different color badge. It's kind of a club badge, but it's a different color badge for phase one, phase two. And in the workshop, people that come back also pay. Our angels do not pay. It's club run. The clubs decided that that's the way they do it, so the angels do not get, do not pay. Uh, the angels get a quarter. There's a visitation thing where they get dangles for the number of visitations they go on in the club that uh, I work with. So every time that somebody comes to angel, they get a quarter of a visitation point. So if they angel four different nights, then they, that's good for a visitation, and they collect these little dangles and things. So it's kind of an award system for the club, but the club doesn't pay in, my, in the program I work with. Uh, Will Eads from California. Uh, and uh, I'd like to elaborately elaborate forget it <laughs> a little <Elaborate>. bit <laughs> did i have breakfast i don't know <laughs> but i'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, the every 17 week program um uh that we are doing uh, buddy weaver and i alternate mondays on the 17 week program for a club a local club and it's been very very successful um the problem we had is after 34 weeks, the people are not ready to dance plus unless they have gone out and taken other classes and really worked at it or unless they're very, very good, quick learners. So what happened after the first 17, after the second 17 session when they're, we have gone through the plus program, however, they're not ready to dance. I told everybody there they had to repeat the last 17 again and I didn't lose one person. What happened was there's a big sigh of relief. <sighs> And the way we have it now, you can stay, and, and we don't move them from phase one to phase two until they're ready. We don't move them out of phase two and graduate them until they're ready. And this is a known fact that everybody comes through the class. They know that. They're not in any hurry to get out and leave. We have many people now who've been there for three years and have graduated. We had to after about the third session. But they stay with us in class because this is where they're comfortable and they come there every Monday night pay their money and dance and you never see them in a club dance and if that's the way they want to work it fine uh, they get to come as angels so they get to come at half price now the other thing that, that we've done is we've taken the club dances because the club that I work with dances once a month and every other tip at the club dance is mainstream now what we do is we, we cater, and I don't necessarily call that club dance. They have a guest caller format, but if the group that I am working with right now, in other words, they, when our group enters phase two, then, they, then we invite them to the club dance. We want them to go to the club dance, and every other tip is catered toward them. And even if they're not through the mainstream program, what I'll do is I'll email or, or call or get information to the caller who's calling that club dance that, well, they're only up through spin the top. They don't know the entire mainstream program, and that caller will just call well, that, that particular mainstream tip, he'll call it at, at that particular program. And the, the, we get as many of our Phase 2 dancers there as possible. It also, interestingly enough, a lot of the other class dancers or dancers that are in the new dancer programs with other clubs also come to, uh, to the club dance. So it's increased the size of the club dance, and they have 12 tips a night. Um, but they, you know, they got 30 squares dancing, and they're, they also do two rounds between the tips, and it's a busy night, but it's a, there's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. And, uh, and uh, well, Bill, you've been out there, and they, they have, a, you know, 30 squares. It's a, it's a good payday, and, and you don't mind doing 12 tips. I mean, it's, it's a gas. And, yeah, good energy. Three, the, the, the club dances, three hours, 8 to 11, or 8 to 10, 45. And, and our classes are, are three hours long, too. Keith Ackerson from Arkansas, just to let those people who have never done multi-cycle know that it's very, very flexible. We run every eight weeks. We start uh, a new class, and we run them through 24 because I can't finish them in 20. So what we do is we started a new dancer uh, 
and we have a, 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 a more like a workshop. One, once you've circled left, you're a new dancer. Okay, now let's start workshopping. And, and we, we workshop something, and then we call a tip, a regular dance. And we work something, shop something the next tip and call a regular dance. Uh, and they, they seem to just learn like that real quickly. Uh, we, we take them, and they know, they know that the first is going to be, and for lack of better expression, a basic tip. The second will be a mainstream tip. The third will be a plus tip. And they dance the tips that they feel that they need to learn. And we find that some of the new dancers will even start doing a mainstream and fake it through what they don't know, which they pick up. So uh, that works real good. And uh, uh, we've sent quite a few people out into other clubs already. So, yeah, it, it's, it's not a problem with being flexible. I want to thank Chris Pinkham for running the mic around. And <laughs> thanks, Chris. <laughs> Gene Baker again. This this may not be the time or the place, but I, I I'm sitting here and I'm I, I'm I'm a firm believer in the multi cycle program. But wouldn't it be really nice if we could start a multi cycle program and say square dance program, not mainstream all the way up to plus, but just go through a square dance program where we could stop at a certain place. As, as many of you can see, this is pretty, this is, this, this is a real flexible program. It can work in a lot of different ways. I'm Ray Ainsworth. I'm not a caller. I'm a, I'm a caller's partner. Uh, my wife started calling in June of last year. So we started a class uh, separate from the other two clubs in the area uh, strictly to help her learn calling skills. Uh, we started uh, leaving a three-week period, which we started new dancers, and ended up with uh, 17 dancers. Uh, we're still in the first stage. Uh, we expect to start uh, the second stage in, in uh, next week. Uh, we have uh, 13 commitments for that second class and three teenagers. Uh, the first class uh, uh, generated a group of teenagers. We have 14 teenagers in that class, two separate classes, a, a, a teenage class and an adult class. Uh, we are, will do our second phase and uh, use the three new teenagers in that adult second phase, and when they get enough uh, experience dancing, then we'll move them to the teenager group uh, on, a, on a separate day. Uh, but it's, it's uh, without being into the second stage, it's really uh, shown us what enthusiasm can do. Uh, all the, the new dancers uh, in the second phase that are committed are friends of the first group, and they just talk about it all the time. Uh, wherever they are, they're talking about how much fun they're having. So uh, it's, it's uh, uh, be it gone beyond the educational experience for us. It, we have created a new club in an area where two clubs already existed that danced uh, on their club nights, sometimes two squares, but most times one square. Uh, we uh, talked with the other clubs, which we have danced with. We use no, no angels. Uh, except in those times where we expect not to have complete squares and we invite one or two friends. Uh, we uh, were allowed to participate uh, in uh, two special dances of the other clubs. The first one was our third week, and basically we came uh, with our full group, 14 dancers, uh, on the sidelines. They did not dance, but they... Uh, they they were quite a spectacle, uh, you know, lined up against the wall and recognized as new dancers. The second dance, uh, there were five uh, squares on the floor at that special dance, uh, and we had 25 on the sidelines. The caller invited uh, our people out for two tips, and they danced with the experienced dancers quite well. The caller, of course, uh, uh, sure. uh, called only calls that he knew that they had completed. 
and uh, they're they're really excited, and and we're expecting to start a third class in August. Uh, on this on this cycling great uh, great tap into that he brings up a great point tap into that new dancer enthusiasm one of the vehicles that's really helped us a lot in recruiting is a vehicle that that we use and we give to new dancers it's a, it's a card a simple business card and on both sides it has all the information about our new dancer program lists all the dates that we're going to start for the coming year these are our cards for 2001 it's also good for a free night so we make these available to our new dancers we want them to carry them around in their purse and their wallets so when they're talking about dancing they got something to give to those people it's not a flyer it's not it's something small enough that that's easily available and it's good for a free night and we encourage them to pass these things out it's one of the best recruitment tools we've ever had and it works beautifully and i'd encourage you if you don't use something like this to pick them up i've got some samples up in here i can also email you uh, a, a copy of of the one we used this year and last year so if you want to drop off your email address and your name i'll be glad to shoot you an email of it but i'll make these cards available it's a great vehicle for recruiting uh, J.D. Strasser, Indianapolis. Um, the current age of an angel ranges anywhere from 50, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Um, how do you get that person who is, number one, used to lessons being at such and such a time, secondly, are very glad when lessons is over, Okay, because, you know, they can, you know, get back to their other normal routine or whatever case may be. How do you convince them that they're just as important in this as what the caller is spending his or her time and so forth? I mean, you're talking about how do you convince the angels how important they are? Well, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Well, Milt, do you understand my question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll try to field that one. The, the, the beauty with multi-cycle is what I'm dealing with now are people that I've taught. And they've never known anything else. But when I first started, the enthusiasm of the program brought them in. And a continuing enthusiasm keeps them there. As I said when I was talking, last year during the summer I had nights of 18 squares angels want to dance and if if you keep it fun keep it interesting and they just keep coming back so you don't have to convince them you convince them by making it fun and and giving them that one tip you know there's a lot of them that come just for that one tip but they'll stay all night let me just add to that the, the success of the program itself gives them the enthusiasm I think every club out there is saying where, how do we get people in the lessons? How do we, you know, we're not seeing any new people. When they start seeing the, the success of the mobile cycle, that builds their enthusiasm. Gail? Yeah, Gail Seastrom. Um, I'm going to address this to Mike because my experience is personal. Would you tell them how you handle singles versus couples coming into this and also the added benefit of how many marriages have resulted from our five years. Well, it's interesting. The, the, we're one of the few clubs in the area that, that allows just singles to come in and dance. And so very often we'll get... We've had ones where we've had more men than women, but most of the time it's more women than men. And, and our guys come out, our, our club angels come out. A lot of them just come out and their wives might sit in, on the sideline or sometimes just the guys come out and they dance with these gals. I, if the gals don't have a partner or even a guy, if a guy, if a few guys that that just get out. I just have them stand in a square and raise their hand. I tell them that this is a, an experience that they do at our new dancer, our Tuesday night new dancer dances. They can't necessarily do that at an open dance, but I have them go out there and raise their hand, and if we look, we need somebody, we need somebody, and they get out there and dance, and we find them a partner. Some of them don't like the fact that they don't have a regular partner and they, they don't stay with us, but others are, are with us and stay with us and dance with us and so it, it, it works in today's society there are an awful lot of singles out there and, and and we had in our first three years we had over 13 couples that met at our group and ended up getting married and it was it was just, it was amazing it was every time he turned around it, it, one night one guy came up to me and he said he said I, I want to propose to Sandy tonight and I thought here and he said yeah, and I said, I, I didn't say this to him, but I was thinking, what if she said no? You know, of all these people. But I, I but, but he, but he, 
and, and the thing about it is that she didn't show up that night. <laughs> so I thought, boy. But he came the next night, and he had the ring again, and he was ready again. And she did come in, and he proposed to her, and she said yes. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> so, so. The thing is, is tap into the fun of your group. Um, we make a point of everybody's birthday when the minute they join the class, they're included. Their name goes on the, lo- the roster for the club. They're included in the, in the newsletter. Once a month, that newsletter comes out to them. And we, you know, I have a list of everybody's birthday. If it's their birthday, we sing happy birthday to them. We make a big thing out of it. We, we make it like the, the dance night is their birthday party. We try to get somebody to bring a cake and we bring the candles out. And we, we just make a party out of it. And, and food, I think food, bring food. People like food. I, you know, it's part of the, the, the party. Milt, I think, also does line dances. I teach line dances. I teach uh, contras. I teach country western. I teach a ten step. I keep the pace going. Um, I try to take no more than about five minutes between the tips. But if I, I, I usually uh, the first tip is a review tip of, of each session. Right after the first tip, I get an angel square out there and I do a demo. And I, I demo the calls that we've taught the week before, and I demo the calls I'm going to teach tonight. And I say the call as many times as I can say the name of the call. I want it just to drive that point home to them. We give them the sets and order books because we want them. Some people learn reading. Some people learn visually. Some people kinesthetically. They've got to be physically involved in the square. But try to provide every mode of learning that you can and, and give them the opportunity to get out there. I show different positioning, especially with my angels. I, I My I demo tip, I torque them around and make fun of them and we do weird things and I say, can you pass the ocean from here? You bet you can and we do it and sometimes the angels get them and sometimes they mess up. It just make, make it fun. If you have fun and, and feed off that enthusiasm, you'll leave just having a great time. You'll be, you'll be tired but you'll have had a great time and the dancers do too. Uh, Terry Lewis again from Canada. Do you uh, caution the, the uh, some people having so much variety that it's just overwhelming to the people. Like, oh no, I just started to learn uh, square dance, and now I'm going to do a uh, round dance or a line dance. And depending on the age, perhaps maybe it's just too much to ask of some people to learn so many aspects. I I, I try to introduce them to the American dance scene, you know, and I and I give them some history of American dance. I talk about the different parts of our dance. And I'm moving to music and, and posture and breathing and, and, and I I think the some people line dance and, and a lot of people don't they don't get up in between the tips they'd rather be sitting down and talking or whatever um, some of them don't want to learn a ten step or a Texas two step or a contra or whatever and 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 I just from a personal standpoint I really try real hard to get these people if they're going to go on into some other program because they're in this thing of learning I try to get them going into round dancing. Uh, it's real easy for a lot of these people after they get through the plus program to get sucked into the advanced program, and unfortunately, uh, the attrition up there when they get in over their heads is is a lot. So I try to we try to keep them as long as we can. Angel them. I love them to come back, but when they get done, a lot of them are apologizing. Well, we're we're going to this class over here. That's okay. They've been with me three or four years. It's, it's time to move on. It's okay. Do you suggest a uh, like a certain level be reached before another type of dancing is is tried? Like I was speaking to someone yesterday from St. Louis. And they said that they, uh, the people in clogging had to sort of prerequisite was to square dance before the clogging part. And like I know we've, when we started, we we did square dancing for a year before we went into round dancing to get, you know, the, the idea of taking commands from a caller and, and just dancing in general before we went on. What about callers as far as their learning process? Like if we take on too many aspects at once, we may not be accomplished in one part of it well enough to really do a good job. Do whatever you're comfortable with doing. If you if you're not comfortable doing line dances, that's okay. If you're not comfortable, do whatever works out for you. Sometimes you can just put on music and let them dance. Put on some swing dance music. Put on some rock and roll. Music. Let them dance, or or just just play music. If you finish up with a singing call, and by the way, do singing calls. Make it. I do singing calls from the first tip. We make it like a dance. And have them put the wind in their face if you've been pushing on them a little bit too much and they and they're they're you know they start seeing that wrinkled brow back off and just let them have fun you know. Okay, Judy Ballard from California. Uh, speaking of variety, Will and I have a, a unique uh, arrangement on Sunday nights, which has been ultimately the success or the survival of this particular club. Uh, 
Sunday nights starting at 5 o'clock. We have a uh, uh, long hall that has uh, dividers. And for the admission, uh, for one admission, our dancers have a choice of six classes from 5 until uh, 6.30. Will teaches on his side of the hall the uh, basic or the beginner's class. 6.30 to 8 is the uh, plus, and then from 8, 8 to 9.30, he has the uh, uh, higher level plus level. Uh, on my side of the hall, I have beginner's round dancers from 5 to 6.30, and then transition class after that, and then my intermediate. So for one admission, they can go back and forth, back and forth, angel the square dance class and come over for their transition round dance and then go back to his side of the hall for the plus. This has been a very, very successful uh, arrangement for Sundown Squares. Great. That's just yeah. that's just great. We can offer that. They also have in their card, it says, reward yourself mentally, physically, socially. Learn to square dance. 17-week classes begin. It's got some information to call. And so these are these cards are great. They're a great avenue for... Yeah. Yeah, a lot of clubs are picking these up to get the information out. Uh, I had a suggestion I thought might go along with this program. I don't I do not do the program, but I, years ago I had a um, DVD Plus group that was a closed group. And, of course, we had classes for them. And uh, But we had another way of bringing people in. They could bring people in from the outside by simply uh, by imitation. But they must dance with them every tip for three whole dances or three weeks. An interesting thing happened after two or three years. It got hard to get people into classes. It got hard to, and then you couldn't keep them. You know that. In other words, the class to club transition was the same as it was in any other club. It was really a problem to get them to go. But the club continued to grow, grow and grew to a huge size. It was a, <coughs> by far the biggest club in our area at the time. And but because they were bringing these people in just a few at a time. Most of the time, there wouldn't be more than two new couples in the club, but they were they were they didn't disrupt the dance, and people looked after them. Sure, took care of them. And and I think that would really fit into getting away from the the get away from the uh, graduation. Which leads Bring us these in, people in. Which leads us into the next the next subject. I wanted to, Chris to talk about them because Chris is using this program also, and he doesn't graduate them. So Chris, you want to address that? Morning. My name is Chris Pinkham. I'm from New Hampshire, and uh, I'm not a panelist, but I'm a cheerleader for the multi-cycle program. Okay. We, we're in our first year of the program, and this was something I started pushing two years ago in the New Hampshire area. And last year, we brought Mike and Gail out for a weekend, and they presented a, their multi-cycle program to the New England Callers Association. The smarter people took this home with them. The people that were hoping will get smarter will come back again in September and take another look at this. This is my version, very quickly, of the multi-cycle program. We meet once a week. I do three phases per night, and they're one-hour sections. I do a basic phase, what I call, call a mainstream phase, and then we have a plus workshop and class. It goes 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10. It is one busy evening for me. I come away beat, but I come away happy with a good spirit every night. <clears throat> it works very well for us. Um, what we're looking at here is a couple of different things. We do not consider our multi-cycle program to be a format of lessons. We have a weekly dance. We say nothing about lessons. They are dance sessions or they are new dancer dances. We're trying to get away from this concept of lessons. So I try to make my group feel like they're not taking lessons. They're just in there to dance. If someone walks in and they want to learn to dance, then we split them up with somebody. This year, one funny thing happened. The local newspaper forgot to pull our ad. And it was a real shame because for about eight weeks, we had couples keep coming in and coming in and coming in. They are perfectly welcome to come in and join the first phase. And what do we do with them? We split them up for two or three weeks. They, get, they take an experienced partner. They go to another square. They learn to dance without or looking over their shoulder wondering how well their partner is doing or how badly their partner is doing. So we get them away from each other. When I feel they're ready to go back together with each other, they're back in. And then they dance together. 
um, and this is working very, very well. The other thing I want to take a quick look at is this. I'm doing the no graduation program. And let me put it this way to you. When you graduated from high school, did you go back to high school the next year? When I graduated from college, I never went back to college after I finished the first one. When I went to grad school, I never went back to grad school. So my whole idea here is don't graduate people. Turn it into a continuum. I blur the lines from program to program. These people don't know whether they're basic dancers, mainstream dancers, plus dancers. They are, in my mind, square dancers. And that's what I like to look at. I want to keep them as square dancers. So we welcome new couples into the first phase anywhere from 8 to 10 weeks after the program starts. I also am at a point now where we're going to be dancing 11 months a year. I only do two starts a year because sometimes, even though this gentleman is from Minnesota, we have some rough weather. So two starts a year works for us. I had 12 feet of snow this winter at home. So, yeah. So we try to teach this as a new dance every week. We try to have fun with it. I work my tail off, but I have never had so much fun in my entire life. The other thing is that it is my prerogative as to whether a dancer moves on or not. If a dancer is having trouble, we have what I call a kitchen chat. Now, we dance in the basement of a, ch a church, and we have a kitchen right next door. And we have a very nice, easy chat. And I would talk to a dancer and say, you know, and this is never in public, it's always in private, you seem to be having a few problems. I think one of the best ways for you to deal with your problems is to repeat a phase. You know, like, I can repeat the phase? And I say, yeah, you can repeat the phase. And it's like, Phew, thank you very much. And I'll come back in, and then they'll repeat the phase again. And it is up to me whether I'm doing this. This is a club-run business that I'm involved in on this angle. But they give me a wide-open amount of discretion and opinions, and they value what I, what I present to them on an opinion basis. They ask me what I feel. I tell them, if I don't like the direction they're going in, I drag my heels like a Missouri mule, okay? And then they say, well, what's the matter? And I say, well, I don't want to do it that way. Here's what I think you should do. Here's how I think you should do this. And I put my foot down all the time. But what's happened in the last couple of years is I've been able to change the direction that they're going in, and this has become one of the most healthy and strongest clubs in the New England area. And here's something nice about that. This year, last year, they gave me a raise. This year, they're splitting their gate with me. So I get a base rate. They pay their expenses, which is me and the hall, which isn't that expensive, and then they split their gate with me at the end of every night. So I walk away every Wednesday night with a good bunch of money in my pocket. And I'm not, I haven't told them this, but you know, I do this for nothing. I go down there every Wednesday night. And it's a, it's a two hour drive from my house to get to this class. And I dropped two other classes that were within 30 minutes of my house just so I could concentrate on one progressive, forward-thinking, intelligent square dance club. And I know square dance clubs and intelligence don't always go hand in hand, but this time it does. So here's what we're looking at. We have three phases. One's basic. It's an hour. One's mainstream. It's an hour. One's plus. It's an hour. And it's boom, 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 boom. But here's the nice thing. The people from the plus group come in and help with the first group. The people from the mainstream group come in and help with the second group. The people from the first group stay for the second group. Sometimes they stay and watch the plus. Sometimes they stay all evening, and it works out very nicely. This is their night to go out and socialize and have fun. The frustrating thing from the club point of view for a while was that we can't get these people on Wednesday night to go out and dance on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That thing that happens with square dancing, how it absorbs into your life and becomes nothing but square dancing. This is a new group of people that are dancing on Wednesday nights. They treat it as their social night. They treat it as their singular date night. We have people that bring their children in for this night. They're dancing with us. So it's one night a week that these people want to dance, and that's how it seems to be working out. So, lots of work. It's a great old dance. Once it, and it works like a charm. I have, I'm having more fun now than I've had in the last 10 years doing this thing. Um, and I keep my music very fresh. I'm in a unique position where I have all the music from every producer every month shows up at my door, and I can pick and choose what works for me. Uh, and so I keep my music fresh. I have a new music night once a week. I bring in once a month. I bring in all the new music from the producers. I say, let's have some fun. Let's play this. Let's play that. What do you like? I also do what Mike does. I don't just do square dancing. If you do that, there's no variety. But 
I use a very nice book called Dancing for Busy People. It helps me with variety. And on one single night, I might try a contra. The next night, I might try a Sicilian circle. I might do a mescalanza. I might do a, a reel of some sort, all based on what they already know, so they're not worried about having to learn something new and do the dance at the same time. It's all based on arm turns, hand turns, whatever. So it still works very nicely. So that's my version of uh, the uh, multi-cycle program. I would take that brochure to your customers, to your clubs, show it to them. If they have any questions, they can get back to you through or through Call Lab through you and talk to them. Push the program. It is w working. It can be our savior. And I think that uh, all I can say about the multi-cycle program is, hallelujah, I have seen the light. And look at Milt, ha Milt has a great book. Talk to Milt about his book. I bought it last year. It served us well as a guideline for what he's doing. We don't use everything from the book, but it does work. So talk to him about his book. I don't mind plugging your book at all. You. All right, thank you. Oh. Anybody have any questions very quickly? Hang on just a second, but we'll get right to you. Uh, met me in with Dick Gasco, California. Yeah, I have a, a couple of questions. You mentioned that you have this little kitchen talk with right. individuals. Now, I, I take it that you've got a bunch of singles in these classes if you're taking an individual down there. Is that correct? We have singles, but some of our people that we've had a chat with have come in as, uh, as partners with someone else, either an experienced dancer or a brand new dancer. I, have no, I am of the opinion that square dancing is not for everybody, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. You know darn well that there are people that are never going to get oh, yeah. it. Uh -huh. And the multi-cycle program allows them to find a level where they get it, okay? And I have a couple of gentlemen in my group right now. They are barely ever going to be able to get out of the phase one program. Um, and the, despite the fact that their partners are do much better and are pushing on them to get out, I want them to repeat that a couple of times so that they're comfortable. And then maybe then they can move on. Your second question? So, well, it's in addition to that. So if you have a single uh, or a one half of a, of a couple, let's say, that yeah. isn't doing well, and the other partner is doing well, do you keep them together, or do you let the partner that's doing well go on, and the other one, or is that... I want them to stay together, but it's going to vary, you know? Some people, again, if we have trouble with some people and a partner is at fault, then I have no problems with talking to some experienced dancers saying, I want these people split up immediately, put them in a different square, and it's, their, it's, it's for their own protection, and we call it punishment, but it's a joke. You know, somebody says, oh, I'm being punished. I say, yeah, you're being punished. Big deal, you know, and they move on. But I'm very open. I'm very frank with my dancers, and uh, they don't put anything over on me. I don't put anything over on them. So um, I'm very dictatorial about how that works. Okay. And the other question, and I guess I'm going to address Mike as well. You both add other types of dancing to your programs. How does that affect... Uh, because it takes time, how does that affect getting your your students through the program you, in the number of weeks? I, I like to address that really easy. You've got break time, okay? That's time you're going to be you, you're walking around talking to people or whatever. Um, take a, if you if you're comfortable doing it, introduce. You don't have to take that much time. I don't. I put on a headset and walk out there, walk them through the line dance, and bam, I'm done. It doesn't take that much much time to do it. So I don't feel like it takes time for my program. It gives other people that want to sit down a chance to sit down and socialize and talk, and I can keep the dance going for those people that want to keep moving along and dancing. So I don't feel like it breaks into my time. The other thing about talking to people about about repeating a phase, the neat thing about this program, because this is something that exists in everybody's classes, you don't have to tell them to come back next year. You just tell them to stay right there, come to the same night, just repeat. And, and I, I do it a little bit differently, give the same kind of approach, and I have class coordinators that do the same thing. But if we find a couple that's just not going to quite make it through the next we come and we tell them listen we there's no race to get through this program and i say this over the mic i say there, there's no prize for getting through this program first i said take the time dance the most important thing is have fun and i said if you get to that point and you're not having fun and it's frustrating and it's overwhelming and i'll tell somebody i said these calls are hard right here you know, with a personal conversation, I said, we get to the point you want to make sure you know these calls in the phase one, because those all that's the key to the, the calls in phase two. I said, I'd love to have you come back and help our new phase one dancers. And if you help them out, you'll not only get a review, but you'll be really helping me a lot. And I ask it like a personal favor to these guys. And they're more than happy to, to stay and, and help with the next phase because they've been through it. And so you can do it um, diplomatically and... And, and you, you're not telling them to come back next year or go to Joe's class down the, the road. You're, you're, you're keeping them. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, be definite about it. There's no sense of these people going on and frustrating other people they're dancing with. And this is not something that's unique to the multi cycle program. The last thing I'd like to say, and, and then you might... Go ahead. Daniel, do you want to comment? I want to comment before you make your last statement, and Melt has something too. Uh, first of all, I think you probably all realize multi cycle is not the answer to all your problems. Okay, but it's a good tool. It's a good tool. That's a good lot of work. If you're promoting square dancing, advertising, and so forth... You're doing it once a year. Now you're going to be doing it three or four times a year. So it's additional work there. But again, it's going to be a lot of extra enthusiasm for yourself. As you, all the people in the room have been talking about it, have all had good enthusiasm for it. It's work. Thank you. Very good, Bill. Okay, I had one comment. Mike touched on it. Chris and I both the bulbs went on. Headset microphone is a necessity if you're going to make it work. They can't hide from you in the back of the hall. <laughs> you can be on the floor. If someone's having a problem, you can walk right out there, work with them. Everybody else can hear what's going on because they probably have the same question in their mind. But a headset microphone is the only way to go. I use both of them. I'm up on their stage and I'm down in between. I, I, it's just another tool to teach with. I think it's an effective way to teach. And, and I, sometimes I like just getting down there and dancing. I'll cut somebody in. I'll cut out an angel and dance. And there, the people look at you. It adds it's, to the fun. It's fun. And it adds to your fun. And if you're having fun, they're having fun. It is, it is contagious. It really is. I, I, to close with this, I, I want to let you know you're going to meet some resistance you take this stuff back to your clubs your clubs are going to we've never done it that way you know we, well I, my, I'm here to tell you if you keep doing the same thing over and over again you're going to keep getting the same result and if they're not getting results think about this program we've had clubs in, in our area that have started this program and they go God it's too much work you know we, we got you know and, and they give up those clubs are going down and going down and they're, they're not but the clubs that want to do something that want to make things happen that want to get new dancers they're going to do something that works, and this works. The advantages are listed in here. Pick up this document. If uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact callers on the back of here. And any of you that are using it, if you don't mind being a contact, I'd love to have your name up in here because we'd love to add. We update this list every year. Uh, we're excited about this program. This has such tremendous advantages, and you want to add some really excitement into your, your own um, enjoyment of calling. Be involved in something like this that's really happening, okay? So, a nice hand for Milt Floyd, Dennis Shermer. I'm Mike Seastrom. If you have any questions, let us know, okay? Thank you, guys.